Hello guys, welcome to another rigging tutorial. In this one, we're gonna try to do some fake dynamic on the braid, okay? Now, when we do animation, uh, there will be something like the braid that we kinda wanted to be able to make it dynamic, if that's possible. Uh, in real practice, uh, this should be done in the VFX department, so the rigger may not have to actually do this. But if you wanted to somehow make that happen in a rigging uh, process, uh, we could ri we could have some feature that to fake this process, but it's not going to be as good as uh, real dynamic. But it's still something that I think that's worth mentioning uh, for simple things uh, like a tail uh, or maybe this braid. Okay. Now I wouldn't recommend to use this tat method for you know, simulating a big chunk of a garment, that would be too difficult, okay. Anyway, so we don't have any joints set up for this braid, so let me go ahead and do that here uh, first. Uh, I'm gonna go for a create CV curve, turn on the snap to the center here, and then I can click and click and click and click and click and click and click, and click one more time, okay. So that's gonna give me a, a, uh, a line here, right. And then let me go to the control vertex, maybe grab that one, turn off that, turn on the soft selection so I can maybe give it a little bit more tweak. I don't even need a super complicated curve. So I'm gonna rebuild it. That's gonna be underneath the uh, modeling, right? And curves, rebuild. And here I probably need just, I don't know, three or four points uh, instead of a lot. So I'm gonna go for maybe five and apply. Uh, that way we got a simpler geometry or a simpler curve, right? So five spans in total. And I can also go ahead and delete this U and that one before the last one so that I got very even five points down the way across this curve. All right, I can call this guy Bra uh, Curve. Something's wrong with my keyboard and when I tap R, I also have E there, <laughs> okay? So curve, um, braid, um, IK spline. All right, and then I just need to apply a bunch of joints along this curve. Uh, we have devised a little code to do that already. Um, so I'm gonna do that here right away, okay? Uh, this code, can create a bunch of joints along this curve. I can define how many joints do I want it to have. So I don't know, maybe eight joints, and then create. Now you can see I have all those joints got created. They're, they will be populated along this curve uh, in a very even manner. All right, now I can start renaming my joint. So modify search and replace name. And then we we'll search for uh, join and replace with J, JT underscore uh, braid IK spline. Replace that. Oops. Probably need to also have an underscore zero in there. So let me control Z to go back. Underscore zero. Yeah, that feels better. All right, so we have the IK joint chain, we have the curve to apply a IK. I just need to go to the skeleton, create IK spline handle here. Uh, I'm gonna check off auto parent and auto create curve just to have myself to select the curve I want to use. So click on the beginning and then the end, and then let me zoom in and click on the curve. Okay, and this is gonna give me the IK handle. I'm gonna call this guy IK handle underscore. Uh, braid. Okay. All right. So double check what I have here by selecting the joints. And I'd like to see my joint are actually happy with the rotations, which they are, right? Cool. So no joint has been ever rotated. That's actually the thing I need to have uh, in a very civil IK splint, splint setup. All right. Now we have all those IK set up. The next step will be uh, creating controllers to control this IK, right? To do that, I need to go 
duplicate this curve twice. Okay, and this one I'm gonna name this guy X plan go, and this one I'm gonna call it particle. All right, and then I'm gonna grab both of those guys and then the original plan do a blend shape. So deform blend shape. All right, now I have two blend shapes applied on this X plan. One is a particle shape and another one is a goal shape, right? Two shapes here. And then I'm gonna go start creating controllers. All right, so controllers will be as simple as a circle here. And I'm gonna go also create a joint, holding down X and drop it down there. I can call this guy JT underscore uh, Bray zero one. Uh, maybe DRV01. And then this is going to be AC underscore braid underscore 01. And then parent the joint to the controller. And then control G to group the controller. And the new controller will be named underscore GRP. Or GRP underscore 01. All right. Cool. So then I can go grab this guy and then my first joint over here, and I can go for a match transformation, right? To match my controller to the joint. And then I can go ahead and grab all the vertices on my controller using component mode. And then I can go ahead and make it bigger, maybe rotate it, do whatever I want to make it fit with the shape of, or the orientation of the control, okay. All right, so that's gonna be the first controller. I'm moving on for the next, control D to duplicate, and then match that to maybe the second one here. Oh, let me go to the uh, object mode, and maybe this one, right? Uh, so, match it there. I'm control D one more time, and I'm gonna match it to here. Okay. Um, all right, and then control D one more time to control the tip. Right, so that's all my controllers. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start changing their name. So these guys has to be, oops, not that one, uh, zero two, right? So zero two, zero three, zero four. Uh, just like a FK system and FK system, and I put them in underneath their very simple FK system. So, zero four goes underneath zero three, zero three goes underneath zero two, and zero two goes underneath zero one. Now, if I open those guys, you can see this is a FK system. It's the only different uh, is that we have we do have a joint shuffled in the middle, right? And those joints will then be banded with the go curve. All right, so I'm gonna go grab the four joint and the go curve, do skin, band skin. Okay, now we may need to tweak the weighting, but we may not. Let's take a look at what we have here. If I rotate this, uh, those controllers, now you can see I'm basically bending my curve, right? Okay, and this curve is not really bending the original bending joint chain or those joints I created. That's because both of those curves are blend shape for my actual IK spline, but they don't have any weighting. And it's probably better to go ahead and rename my stuff here also for the blend shape. Can I can name this guy braid blend shape. All right, now after that, I need to actually set up controls to turn on those and off those two blend shapes. So what I do here is grab my controller and then go for a attributes, call this guy dynamic blend. And from zero to one and hit okay. All right, now this dynamic blend one will have to control the blend shape values for the original span uh, span curve. So here in the node editor, let me clear everything and add my curve. Actually not, not the curve, the, the blend shape node. So let me go ahead and grab the blend shape. Uh, so uh, select blend shape node and add this guy in. 
right? So this guy will have to take inputs from my controller, which will then control the two target weighting, right? So let me grab my controller here and also add it in. And you can see I have the dynamic blend, dynamic blend. This dynamic blend will be connected to the particle. Okay. And then I'm going to do a uh, multiply divide. Oh, actually, I need to subtract it by one. Yes, that's this, this should be an invert, actually. Reverse. Reverse should do the work. All right. So I'm going to reverse the value. Uh, it, it takes a vector. So I'm going to just use the input x. So the reverse results goes to the other one. All right, so now I'm tweaking like which one takes full control and which one does not, or the blend between those two. And that way I can say, okay, I want dynamic, then turn on dynamic. And if I don't want dynamic, I turn off dynamic, right? So for now, uh, the dynamic blend is one, so it's gonna use whatever this particle curve goes. So that means when I rotate my controller, uh, nothing has happened because uh, this one does not change shape, right? That, uh, this one does not change change shape, but uh, but now it's 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 actually one for the blend shape uh, over here, right? Uh, and if I go back to turn off the dynamic blend, you can see it's blending back to the goal shape, which is actually you know the curve we're bending with our controller's joints. All right, so two systems or two curves each have a blend shape on the original IK spline curve. And for now, only the goal is, is being controlled by our newly created controllers. And the other one is just nothing. Nothing is controlling it. All right, cool. So that's the basic structure. And then we need to make the particle one actually become something dynamic. To do so, I'm gonna grab this guy and go to the FX and there is the in particle and we use the legacy particles and we're gonna go for soft body. All right. Now what happens is now underneath this curve, you have a bunch of particles. You can control one to isolate those guys. You can see for every control vertex on the original uh, curve, you have a particle created for it. Now you know that particle will be able to driven by any dynamics, right? So now if we grab this particle and then go for a solver here and we can create a turbulence just, just to test it. I'm gonna go to the uh, magnitude uh, of the turbulence and make it 2,000 or so, so it's, it's like very strong. And now one more thing I need to tweak to make it work is here I'm using no dynamic, right? So I'm gonna change that to one to actually make the particle curve to take full control of the blend shape. Now if I play the animation, you can see now the join got moved out and this is gonna be randomly, you know, <laughs> dragging around. All right, you can see the particles are moving and those particles will then drive the actual shape of this curve. So these particles will drive now, will, will now drive the shape of the curve. For every control vertex, they will follow an particle, a particle here that we created. All right, now that's moving, okay. Uh, just to take that, uh, into uh, transfer that into our actual geometry, we actually need to bind our geometry with the join. And by the way, we probably need to parent our join system to our uh, original binding join chain to put them here. That way it's a single consistent join chain. Uh, it's better for game engine. And then I'm gonna go again, grab all the joints. Here we have all the, uh, for the braid and then the head geometry, the hair geometry. We do a rigging and then skin, band skin. Oh, actually uh, add influence here because it's already banded with other joints. So we just go for add influence, make sure that you check on, you check on the lock weights and then apply. Now we, we can go ahead and try to paint the skin weighting and then grab this guy. You can see they're locked. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock these guys real quick. And then I need to go ahead and paint the weighting. Uh, okay. So in this case, uh, it's, a, it's some work you have to do then. All right, so let me go ahead and carefully paint its weighting uh, here. So we have that and then go on to this guy. It's gonna be taking care of the next portion. Uh, now here, you don't have to go super careful. You just roughly block out what's going on, right? 
and then you blur them or smooth them afterwards. Don't try to smooth them yet, otherwise you are not sure that you're taking over all the weighting from the original head joint to the braid joints. So you take over the weighting first and then you take care of the blending internally for those joints. Oops. Right. Uh, that. Now here you have to really be really careful about this little band down there because it, it does have some internal faces if I isolate this piece. So you do have to do this, right? Isolate this piece and really take care of the internal uh, geometry also. Okay. So that also means if you could avoid doing this kind of like geometry, it's better to actually not. Uh, otherwise, you have to take care of the weighting really carefully on the inside. All right, that should be that joint. And moving on to the next, this one, right? So I'm just gonna take over these guys. Okay. And then the last joint here. We don't really do the tip, so that joint does not really do anything. All right. Okay, so now when we're happy with the base blocking of the weighting, one thing I want to go back to check is the head and see if it does it if it does take over some of the weighting here. You can see it does. So here I'm gonna fix that real quick. Spend little two will take care of that. Okay, take a look at that again. All right, it's also taking care of something over there. So I'm gonna choose one of the joint down there to fix that. Okay, so maybe this one can also take care of some of the areas. Okay. All right, when there is a little bit, we could hold down control and use replace, hold down control and you know subtract it, but just don't use it that much. Okay, it's dangerous to, to do that. All right, let me also take care of this part a little bit more so the head will keep it there, more or less. Now back to the other controllers or other weightings, we can then go for a uh, smooth and flat to do it, you know, two times to smooth out their weighting. And last one here to this guy. All right, let's see what else. Yeah, we could also make the, the head to take back some of the areas if I wanted to do that. Okay. Smooth this guy out. I wanted to be again take full control of at least this first row here. Right, this edge. And then we can we can do some blending here also. Alright. Now let's take a look at what happens when we play the animation. You can see the braid gets a little bit crazy. Right? It's, it's floating away, it's drifting off because of the particles are moving away by the turbulence. All right, that means this part works. So the turbulence or any dynamic that drives the particle will then make the particle to drive the control vertex of this curve. And because this curve is a full-blown blend shape for our eye case blend curve, as you can see here, that's why you know the, this eye case blend follows the shape of the particle curve, and that's what's driving the joints, and which eventually drives our geometry. All right, so I don't need the turbulence to do that for me, okay? Uh, I actually wanted to, uh, the IK or sorry the, uh, the the dynamic right this guy here to somehow trying to always follow the shape from the actual goal span curve because that's the one when we uh, turn off dynamic that's the one who actually does the animation right so we uh, we don't really need to be simulated fully or you know s um, not really relying on any animation did by the animator this way. We kind of wanted to just give us some overlapping events, right? Overlapping kind of like uh, uh, animation. So that means this shape will try to always reach the shape of this shape. That's why this is called a goal shape. Okay. So what you do is you grab the particles and then the goal curve. You go for FX and then there is going to be end particle and then go here. Okay. When you do that, 
and it's going to try to match with the shape of the goal. Okay, when you play animation, you don't see anything moves except that. I don't really want that. So let me go ahead and disable that animation by deleting that. So let's say I'm now in no dynamic mode, right? So I'm going to key animation here and go maybe frame 45. I did this animation, right? Now this is going to be the animation. Okay, but now if I go ahead and turn on the dynamic and break that connection actually. <laughs> uh, yes, to not have that animated. If you can see what we have is, um, it's not going there yet. Let's see what's going on. Uh, so it's one here. So we're doing simulation. Let's take a look at the particle. They are following, maybe that's just you know, goes really slow, so it's able to cap to get there really fast. Oh, you can already see some shaking actually on the very end. You can see it's shaking a little bit. See that? Uh, that's because of the particle is trying to reach the goal, but they overshoot a little bit, and then they gotta get attracted back. More like, more or less like there are gravitational pull right from the vertices on the goal curve to the particles here and that drives them uh, to make them go there. Okay, we can go a little bit more extreme here if we grab the animation and drag them forward so they happens faster. You can see what's happening here, right? All right, so that's basically the idea behind uh, the fake dynamic. Again, this is fake, so it's, it's used for giving you just that extra layer of overlapping, but it's not gonna be perfect. Uh, it's not gonna be as good as real dynamic, but we can enhance this uh, a little bit more. Uh, now what's happening is that when we do this, all the particles are moving up and down. We can actually isolate the particles and take a look. You can see they're shaking this way, right? Uh, if the hat is also moved, wait, let's do that. Maybe here. Oh, and by the way, we could make the our entire control system follow the head. That's something we probably need to do anyways. Go back to frame one. So I want this rigging system that we have already, all right, to follow our uh, global, our head, basically. So I can grab this guy and, oops, this controller's group and control G to group it. I can call this guy uh, braid rig. Rig, okay. GRP. All right, and that's gonna go into our Sophia rig group, and then the head controller will have a rigging constraint and then parent constraint. Maintain upside down. Apply that. Right, that way, I should be able to control this or not yet, because uh, I probably have the dynamic on. That's why I turn that off to zero, and that should make it follow, right? And the others, uh, they are not necessarily to be anywhere, which we can just group them all together and call it call it a braid um, rig IK dynamic, all right? And then, we can put it into the braid rate group, but we just check out their inherent transform. That should work. So go to the translation and check out that. Let's see. All right. And here. Cool. So I'm gonna keyframe here on frame one, right? Frame 15, maybe go up a little bit more. Or just rotate this guy. Alright. Now you can see the problem here, if I turn on the dynamic actually. What's happening here is that the base is also having that shaking effect, right? So because everything is having the same amount of attraction and they are just gonna be trying to reach to the goal curve shape, right? And that takes some time, okay? So let's take a look at how we can tweak those attributes. Uh, here in the particle shape, um, here, we do have a bunch of options underneath the goal weight and object. You can see here the braid I can goal shape is having a, a, a weighting of 0.5. So 
they all have like half of the attraction. If you change that to one, what what happens is that it's basically just going there, right? There's no shaking or whatever, because they have a waiting one. They will just follow whatever the actual vertices of the goal curve, like 100%. Okay, so that's not what we want either. We want to make the base to follow it completely, right? But gradually going down to the tip, we want those particles, right? Gradually going down to the tip, we want those particles to have different uh, goal shape or go uh, weighting, right? So that the ones on the very tip will have a smaller weighting so that it takes longer to actually go match with the shape of the goal shape, right? If that makes sense. So actually that's that can be done that can be done down here in the per particle attribute. You have the goal PP here. Okay. So what we do here is right click on the goal PP and create a ramp. Alright. Now if you go to the node editor and take a look at what's happening here. You can see this is our particle shape, and there is, let me open this, there is a uh, ramp, okay? And this ramp's output goes to the particle's uh, goal per particle attribute, okay? And it's re reading information from a ramp. And for every individual particle, it's going to use one attribute to drive or to read uh, as the V attribute of the ramp, okay? And for now, it's using age, age, right? So the age of the particle will determine the goal PP or goal per particle attribute. So if particle has has a age of zero, which means it just got spawned, it's gonna read because that's gonna be the V input. It's gonna read a zero here. It's gonna read zero here in this RAM on the V direction. So it's gonna read the value one, and that value one goes out. Uh, from the mapper and got to the goal PP. So that means that particle will have a goal weight of one. Now, if there's a particle that is having a, the age of like 0 0.5, so it's like 0 0.5 uh, second old, it's gonna read the value here in the middle. It's gonna read 0 0.5 also, right, from the ramp because that's the middle gray. And that means the goal PP for that particle will become one. So the older the particle is, the smaller the Go PP is, which is not what we want, right? We don't want it to be actually affected by the age. So this V coordinate, which determines what value to read from this ramp, will not be determined by age. I'm gonna delete that. All right, here let me go grab the particle shape and say also I want all the particles to live forever. So I'm gonna go change the lifespan to live forever. All right, so what I really want to do is using a different different attribute to drive this V coordinate. All right. Now for particle, every particle have multiple attributes you can, you can define. And there is one right above GoPP, which is called the mass, right? We can use that to determine uh, what to read from the ramp. So here, right out of the box, I'm gonna holding down shift and drag our particle shape to the array mapper. And then I'm gonna find the mass over here. You can see somewhere down the way. Maybe it's a little bit down there. Mass will control the V coordinate. All right, so now the particle's mass will determine what position of the ramp will be read, which will then be passed along to be the particle's go weight. Uh, so how can we view those things? Uh, here in the window, Windows General Editors, you have the Component Editor. Okay, let's open that. Oops, drag it over. Okay. And then I can go ahead and try to grab the particles. I can isolate this one and then holding down red mouse button, go to particles, and then grab all my particles here and go to the particles. You can see now that's all the particles we have. And that's their mass and that's their go PP, right? Now, what's interesting is that the mass is one, the go PP is zero. And that makes sense actually. If you go back to take a look at what's happening in the node editor, you can see now, if mass is one, we're reading the one position of the ramp. Uh, the one position of the ramp, this is zero, this is one, the one position of the ramp will be black. So meaning zero, right? That, that is actually quite accurate in this case. So now they're all having a goal of zero. So they will just be a wandering off and not doing anything. Uh, so that's when we can actually go tweak those values. So for now, if I wanted to say, okay, I want the first one to be stick, 
to the base, then the the goal will be one, so the mass will be zero. Unfortunately, zero will not be an optional value for the mass. Anything should have a little bit of mass. So I'm going to go for something really small, like 0 0.001, as that's actually too small. So 0 0.001, yeah, that's right. You can see the goal PP immediately changes to 0 0.99, right? Uh, that's because, again, there is a relationship between mass and the, the goal PP, right? Uh, it's trying to read 0 0.01, which is going to be very close to 1. But I can make that actually 1 by dragging this over to from the edge a little bit more. So now you can see uh, if I go back and grab the, the points, you can see this one now is one. Okay. Now for the rest, I just need to gradually make them bigger for the mass and then they will have gradually smaller go PP. Okay, so let's try that. So I'm going to go for point 0.15 maybe for this guy. You can see that changes to changes to point eight, uh, 0.58, right? And then point 0.3. Uh, point 0.45, point 0.7, and then maybe 1. It's probably not a very linear transition. Change that to point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.6, point 0.8. That, yeah, that's that's better. And this one will be point 0.99. I'm just going to give it a some value here because you don't want it to be zero right either so that's going to be a new distribution right we have now different go pps the base vertice vertex the first one there will have a go pp of one meaning that it's going to stick to where the actual shape of the go curve is and the others will gradually trying to catch up but not as close so now let's take a look at what's happening here play the animation you can see now we have a very cool follow-up right now you do see a problem here now. This one is really trying to catch up, but its value is just so small, it's not able to get there, right? So we kind of wanted to then remap this if we could. And we do have a convenient setting here though, um, in, the, uh, in the ramp here. You can see there is a value called mean value here. If we change that to 0.5, then the minimum value will be 0.5, no matter what's read, uh, what's being read. So now you can see zero will have at least 0.5 GoPP value here. Okay, now you can see we got some really cool follow-up animation, right? All right. So that's basically the idea behind the um, fake dynamic in its full extent and we can have more control if you wanted to like we can have a value to control the mean value here like here i can go grab my controller and say okay let me give it a new attribute and i can say uh dynamic um freedom or weight not dynamic go weight not makes more sense technical wise maybe not making that much sense to animators <laughs> and go minimum weight right and then that can be some value from zero to one of course and we can hit okay right and then we can add our controller in it's over here right so now our controller should be able to control that if we just holding down shift and drag over shift and middle mouse button drag it over here and then you can use our new attribute to control the mean value that way we can use the controller right away to determine that all right so here i can say okay i can make the mean value to be 0.75 so they're all pretty strong now you can see it's following uh, much closer right all right now, more importantly, with this attribute there, I could say I can make it dynamic, more dynamic in the middle of the animation and make it lesser dynamic when it has to settle down. So here I can keyframe this guy to tell it to be one in the beginning, key select, right? And then few frames later, that's when I want the dynamic to happen, maybe 0.4 instead of 0.5, right? I can go really low here, key select it. Now, before we finish this, we key that again, and eventually we want it to be one again so that way we can control where do we want dynamic how much kind of thing right so now let's take a look you can see the follow-through happening only in the middle but not uh, on the very end it just stops there really quickly
right? All right, so that's more control we can do with this big dynamic, and that's actually all I want to talk about for this. Uh, so fig dynamic is also having some performance hits. So when you're animating, turn that off, right? You don't have dynamic here. Uh, so yeah, there's one more thing we should do actually here in the node editor here. We have the dynamic blend, right? And here we're gonna use the dynamic blend to control the particles uh, enable or disable thing. So here the particle can be turned off on the very top, there is a is dynamic, turn that off to disable is dynamic, right? Or we can even turn off the dynamic weights, those kind of things. So we can use our uh, controller to control that. So dynamic blend will control, let's see, dynamic weight. That makes more sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Or we can also check the is dynamic, that should work also. So that way, we are turning off the dynamic completely. We won't have any dynamic when we turn it off. Right? No dynamic will be calculated, and it's just going to be a normal animation like this. Right? But when we're done with the animation, then we turn on the dynamic blend to be one, right? and then it becomes dynamic again. All right, cool. Yeah, that's going to be everything I think worth mentioning. Again, just don't try to use it anywhere. And uh, also, uh, if you're curious on like, um, like is there something more you can do? Uh, there is something in the particle here called the conserve here, which is gonna be the value that will determine does the particle inherit the previous frame's velocity. If this is one, that means the next frame will first apply the previous frame's velocity on the particle and then keep calculating from there. But if conserve is zero, that means uh, the particle will forget what the previous velocity is, and then the new velocity will be calculated uh, based on the new condition of what force has been applied, things like that. So this way you can see what it does is conserve, value one will make it follows much closer and conserve value of zero will basically say, you know, let's recalculate the velocity, it's trying to catch up, uh, but harder because it does forget the previous frame's velocity. See that? Okay, so that's one thing I think also kind of like worth mentioning a little bit. All right, so all the rest, I left, I left that for you to experiment on the attributes of the particle when it comes to VFX, it's always a little bit more complicated. So yeah, it's up to you to see if there's something more you can you know, take into consideration to make your control more flexible. But this is the basics of the fake dynamic. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.